Hello, everyone. This is COADB.com, or the Coat of Arms Database. And today we're going to talk briefly about the Taylor Coat of Arms. The first one to discuss is blazoned as follows. Ermine on a cheap gules, a fleur-de-lis between two boar's heads cooped and erect ore. Crest, a naked arm embowed holding an arrow proper. This family descended from Thomas Taylor, who was born into a landed gentry family in Sussex, England in 1631. He was a professional surveyor who married Anne Axtell and moved to Ireland. Thomas was able to buy over 21,000 acres of land in County Meath. He had a son, also named Thomas, who sat in the Irish House of Commons and increased the family standing when he was created the first baronet of Kells in the Baronetage of Ireland in 1704. It was his son, Robert Taylor, who built the house at Ardgillen. The next is blazoned ermine on a chevron gules between three anchor sable as many Escalops Argent. George Taylor, Esquire, born 1603 and died in 1668, was of London and he was a bitner by trade who purchased Durant Hall in Chesterfield. It was inherited by Taylor's daughter and sole heiress, Esther Taylor, who married Sir Charles Scrimshire of Norbury and Staffordshire. George built and endowed six almshouses in Salter Gate. The third coat of arms is blazoned Argent on a chief indented gules three escalops ore. This coat of arms was recorded in a funeral entry for Jeremiah Taylor, the Bishop of Down, who died in 1667. He was born in Cambridge, the son of a barber named Nathaniel Taylor and his wife, Mary Dean. Jeremiah was a cleric in the Church of England, who was a famed writer of the time known as the Shakespeare of Divines. He married and had two daughters. He was once taken prisoner with other royalists during the siege of Cardigan Castle in 1645. Next, we have Ermine on a pale and grailed sable, three lions passant of the field. Crest, a leopard passant per pale proper and ermine the dexter paw resting on the shield ermine charged with a pail as in the arms. It belonged to the tailors of Kirkham Abbey. It was born by Edward Clough Taylor, who was born in 1786. He was a justice of the peace and deputy lieutenant for Yorkshire. He lived at Furby Hall and Kirkham Abbey. He married Sophia, daughter of Richard Cumberland, Esquire, and had two sons and two daughters with her. Fifth, Argent on a cheap sable, two boar's heads cuped fessways of the first, Lagued Gules. This coat of arms was borne by Brockhill Taylor, Esquire of Ballyhace. As part of King James I's plantation of Ulster in 1609, Brockhill's father, John Taylor of Cambridge, received a land grant of 1,500 acres. Brockhill was a member of Parliament for Caven in 1634 and 1635, and he died a year later. His daughter and co-heir, Elizabeth, married Humphrey Perrault of Drumahays. Six, Gules a lion passant between two oak trees eradicated in fess all ore, on a chief argent a dexter hand cooped and erect sable between two pellets. Crest, an Irish rebel's head proper. 
This coat of arms was registered in 1656 to Captain John Taylor of Ballyphillip, who came to Ireland in Colonel Saunders Regiment. The last blazon, Sable, a lion passing argent in chief, a trefoil slipped oar, crest, a leopard passing proper charged on the shoulder with a trefoil slip vert. This coat of arms was confirmed to Colonel Philip Meadows Taylor and to the other descendants of his grandfather, Reverend Philip Taylor of Dublin. He was an administrator in British India as well as a novelist, engineer, and artist. If you enjoyed this video, please visit coadb.com and click on the link up top that says Genealogy Research. As you learned in this video, one surname can have tons of different coats of arms associated with it. So don't just pick any old coats of arm that has your surname on it. We piece together your family tree to determine which, if any coat of arms, belonged to your ancestors. Thank you.